Uh, my husband had taken his test a couple of times and failed because he's very nervous. Uh, when I went, he said, I hope you don't get that really big, fat Welsh man <laughs> as your, as your <laughs> examiner. Oh, now, we were learning in a mini, and my heart just dropped when I saw this big, fat <laughs> call my name but in those days I was about seven stone I'd got my hair all blue front mini skirt that's it's always a pass every time I change gear I have to touch his knee <laughs> she passed. I went home and I passed first time <laughs> naturally how, how long did the test last six hours <laughs> I was lucky with mine. I, I remember three of us bought a car between us. And we had one chap teaching us, and we were all just as bad as one another. But uh, they decided because I was the youngest, I was going in first. Anyway, on the Saturday, I was due to go in on the Monday. And on the Saturday, this car broke down, so we bought another one on the Sunday. And then on Monday, it's the first time I'd driven it, and I managed to pass it. They all thought, oh, it's easy. So they both went in after me, and they both failed. So. <laughs> Well, my, my wife's sister, Mary, she, she failed her test five times. And the next time, she, somebody said, why don't you get hypnotised? So she wouldn't get hypnotised. <laughs> she passed. <laughs> oh, I can't remember what thing about it. <laughs> well, I, could, I took a friend for a test, and um, we got out of the car, and she'd lost one of the L plates of the car. So anyway, we managed to find a bit of cardboard and tie it up. And I said, well, what can we put on this? I said, you know, how can we write on it? And the only thing we could find was a lipstick. And we put the lipstick on <laughs> it. <laughs> and she passed. <laughs> well, I started learning in London. And I was with the British School of Motoring. Mm -hmm. And a child, they were playing chicken, these children. <coughs> And this little one ran straight out in front of me, and I didn't stop the car. It was the instructor, because I was absolutely, I was mesmerised. Yeah. But he actually stopped the car, thank goodness. Mm. So I was so nervous, I failed my first test. Oh, no. But I was very naughty on my second. I put on my Red Cross uniform. It gave me the confidence. Okay, because you're in a uniform. I was in uniform, and I felt, this is it. And I passed. I learned to drive in 1955, oh, actually, oh, yes, right, okay. in Jamaica. My husband was working there at mm. the time, and uh, compared with young people today, I started later, I was about 29 or mm. 30, but then mm. not that number of people back then mm. had motor cars. Mm. Yeah, and what was it like to learn to drive in Jamaica? Um, interesting. Um, bye -bye. Um, yes, uh, we had a TCM Jeep actually, and uh, the driving was very erratic there, so you were never quite sure what people ahead and behind you were going right. to do, so mm -hmm. it, it did prove very interesting. The actual test I found very easy, I think. Mm -hmm we just got passed anyhow, you would have to be pretty awful not to have passed. <laughs> I learned to drive well, on, uh, in Rhodesia on my father's farm and I learned uh, on an old Land Rover uh, driving around there from a, and an old Humber Super Snipe um, and I guess that would have been, um, I, was, I started when I was about 10 having to sit on a cushion and so on. I couldn't really reach the pedals. Took my license at 16 mm -hmm. Um, and uh, have been driving ever since, but I had to, when my husband and I came to live in the United Kingdom about 30 years ago, um, we had to retake our license mm. completely. Okay. From start, and that was pretty terrifying, because I thought, God, if I failed after that, but I passed, so. You know, the minute you've got that piece of paper that says you can drive a car, and we had um, a Morris Minor convertible in those days, pale yeah. blue, that eggshell blue, you've yeah. probably got one in the Motor Museum with yeah. the hood down. And um, 
you know, it was the height of sophistication mm -hmm. to be able to get in that car with the hood down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'd have rather had a, an MG Midget or something, right. but, you know, you had to make do with what there was. Yeah. And just to be able to get in the car and, and just go, yeah. probably only three miles up the road to the local shops, but um, yeah. it was just a, just a lovely feeling. Yeah. Um, I had a moped when oh, I right. was younger, when I was 16, and the experience of being on a moped, um, uh, I didn't have a Vespa, but it was um, a little moped, went maximum 30 miles an hour, and it was such a feeling of freedom of uh, being on transportation for the first time, and it's never been replicated since driving in a car. There's something about being on a bike mm -hmm. in the open air, yeah. especially in the summer in England, obviously, because it's a bit cold in the winter. Um, fabulous, yeah. absolutely loved it. Independence, because I um, was down where we lived in Ballstairs on my own quite a lot, didn't work to away, so having my own vehicle, getting around with children was brilliant, yeah. definitely, yeah. best thing I did. Red Fred. No, I Red Fred. Red Fred, it was called. It was oh, Red, we called it Fred. We were called Red Fred. My dad called his Morris Minor Rose Torp because that was the name of the um, that was the name of the colour of the car. Oh. So she was always, that was always referred to as Rose Torp. And Bert had a, a Morris Traveller, which we called Jenny Walk. <laughs> Why? Jenny because um, we um, his boss had had a Traveller and had called it Jenny, and we'd always. You know, sort of referred to it as Jenny, and then we, when we bought one, we thought we'd call it Jenny. And Wok, because that was the um, number plate W O um, K. And we were going, we, we told my parents we were coming up and we were bringing Jenny Wok <laughs> <laughs> to meet her. On the Chinese takeaway, and when we got there, they came out to meet us. And, <coughs> My mum said, well, where is she? So we said, this is her. She said, well, I was going to do some more potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a car. <laughs> no, I've done some more potatoes, but it's a car. <laughs> well, I've got an old camper van, and I call her Libby B, because it's a long story. <laughs> we were camping in a field in Dorset and the warden, National Trust Land, he used to come around every morning. And um, he came around one morning, my daughter was camping there as well, and he says, where's your mum? And she said, oh, she's down, down at the beach having a swim. This was about nine o'clock in the morning. She's down at the beach having a swim, bearing in mind that it's down a steep cliff, ten minute walk, and then down a steep cliff to the beach. And um, so he said, oh, she's a lively old bird. And that has stuck ever since because the friend I was with, he was walking along the south coast and he got to Weymouth and he sent me a card addressed to the lively old person, <laughs> care of this gentleman. <coughs> and that, he was absolutely mortified.